Hello everyone, I am Joe Flick at the Montana State Library. I am here with Chuck, and Chuck is our tech guy for Aspen, and he's going to go ahead and take us through some of the basics of getting logged in and getting started. Let's take away Chuck. Helps if I hit the unmute button instead of the mute button. So, uh, can everybody hear me? I'm going to assume yes, since we've been chatting. Um, I'm one that you're going to get a hold of when you submit a help ticket for Aspen. So pretty much any question you have about Aspen is going to end up at my desk at some point. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, so I guess we'll just dive right in. The first thing we need to talk about is, well, how the heck do I get to Aspen? Well, like with everything on computers, there's 10 million ways to do it. There's only one really right way to do it. And that's going to be to go to aspen.mt.gov. And I see I'm typing faster than my screen is showing. And in this case, that will redirect you over to mslservices.mt.gov. That is currently the correct location for Aspen, but if you ever want to get to Aspen, always go to that aspen.mt.gov because if we ever move it or upgrade things and change its address, that will always get you there. So that's just the quick and easy shortcut on how to get to Aspen. Um, so then once you're there, you should show up with this search Aspen page, sort of the main, the main front page that anybody can see. You don't have to log in. You don't. Have I to guess do I am anything. where I'm supposed to be. Hello. Okay. <laughs> um, what you see there, you so then, from here, we're going to start looking at what you can do without logging in, because I got a lot of questions about. Well, I can't find this thing and I don't know if I'm logged in, you'd be willing, you'd be surprised that you can find actually most of what you're looking for without logging in. Now that's not true if you want to register for events, that's not necessarily true for a few things, but I will show you that after I show you what you can see without logging in. Um, so here are our main Aspen functions for a non-logged in user. Obviously, we have our events, which is our event calendar. If it decides to play nice and load for us, it should. We just reworked it. Jim, you ever notice in a demo, nothing ever works quickly. So this will show you all public events, which is for the most part, really all of them. Um, at the top of the screen, we have our new search box, which you can just start typing away with things that you wanna find. And when you figured out what all you wanna search for and tell it to search, it will then narrow down the list. You have the actual visual calendar as you scroll down. So then like we're in the Aspen Basics course here. I'll let that load in the background, not slow us down a whole lot. And then down at the bottom, it's actually the whole listing of all of the events that are shown in the calendar. Um, because remember, it may, I mean, obviously our calendar is bigger than just the one month that's shown here or scrolling back a month or forward a month. It actually will go back an entire four years in this case. And it'll make sense why four years after we log in and do some monkeying around. Um, I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with CE credits and when they expire. Um, so that's, the events page. I mean, you, anybody can get here, you click on it, and then you can see, like this course, I clicked on the event, I told it to open a new page, and this is what everybody gets to see. 
Um, you'll also notice down at the bottom for this particular event, we have event resources. Feel free to look at some of my documentation, which needs a whole lot of work, but it always does. Um, and I mean, just always remember, read some of these boxes. I'm getting a lot of people that aren't, but the informational boxes really are there for a reason. Um, because like this event, it would be nice if you registered, but actually the link will get you into this event because our events are open. Very rarely do we have events that aren't, and they will be listed as such if that's something we have to do, and that's sometimes for like licensed content and things like that. Okay, so we can come back. Anytime you wanna get back to the main page of Aspen, you can click on this search Aspen on the right-hand side because these, again, on the main page are all of our search options. So let's take a quick look at organizations. And since it's being a little slow, let me open some things in the background for you. Okay, this is our new organization search page. So we can look for all kinds of fun things and it lists all the organizations that are in Aspen. Currently we have 851 listed there. That's school libraries, that's public libraries, special libraries, that's museums. We got all kinds of things in there. So I just wanted to see all libraries in Helena, or all organizations, they're not necessarily all libraries. I can go through and there are 57 different things listed in Helena that are in Aspen. And then from here, we could go in and actually look at a specific organization. So if you wanted to contact somebody at the organization, you'd be able to get in and see contact information for that organization. I highly recommend at a later date, like after this meeting, um, you go on, take a look at your library, see if your contact information's right, see if your hours are right. Um, just generally take a look because we've found a lot of times, this is where Google will get a lot of the libraries if you do a search for them. Aspen seems to come up to the top of the list. Um, so knowing that things are right, makes things a lot better. So I probably should have picked one that had less people for staff, but yeah. So this is everything public that we know about libraries. There is some information that is considered semi-private. Um, so we don't just put that out there. Um, most of it isn't a big deal, but it's also, you know, if people don't need to know it, we don't need to show it. So, um, so that's for organizations. And then we would go back to search Aspen. And if we click services, that would take us over to the services page. This is one of the older search pages that we haven't actually updated yet. So usually I like to show you options as to what are there because how do I know what to search for if I don't know what's there? Um, so you can either go ahead and search for something, or if you just click search, it'll show you everything. Um, and when I say everything, I mean things that have expired, things that haven't necessarily come up yet, and it, it just sort of shows you everything. And then you can go and click on um, varying projects and find out more details about them. And again, this is all public, facing, you don't have to sign in. If all of a sudden you just needed to know who the heck administers Montana Courier Alliance, you can come in here and find out exactly who it is that needs to be contacted. Don't have to spend the five minutes logging in, done. You've got your information, you're good to go. So if we click search Aspen, that would take us back to this page again. And then we have our positions. I'm opening these guys up in the background because things are running a little slow for me today. So if I click positions, that brings us over here to the position search. 
So this is the same thing. This is any sort of publicly facing information that we have for positions, which are not the same as persons, but I don't necessarily need to bore you with that particular aspect of Aspen. Um, it's a database problem I have. It's not necessarily a problem for you guys. And so this will search anybody that has a position in Aspen. So let's say I'm having some real trouble with my continuing ed. I'm going to talk to that Joe lady and figure out what the heck's going on. Oh dear. <laughs> we had a good, good uh, question in the chat box. I just want to bring up and that is um, uh, if someone notices the information is wrong about their library, how do you get that changed? And we do have a session planned on how to keep that information updated. But in the meantime, um, if you have, you can contact any of us at the state library and we'll help you um, make that change or you can open a help ticket and tell Chuck to make it for you. And those are the, easy ways to, we'd want that information updated and we'll do anything we can to help you. And depending on how much stuff it is, I will either walk you through it or like Joe said, I'll just go ahead and make the change because, you know, it may be faster for me just to, you know, change your hours for Monday than it is to necessarily have you go in and change all that stuff for something so small. If you want to change everything about your library, we're going to talk about training. Um, so I did a search for Joe, she came up, and then this is her public contact information um, that we have on the system. This is another one of those places I highly recommend. Just like everybody does in Google, search for yourself, see what you find. Um, and actually, that, that's kind of an important fact because lately I've been getting a lot of emails kicked back to me for people registering for events. And it says that the email that Aspen has sent you is undeliverable because the email address is incorrect. So you might be waiting for that super secret Zoom code for registration and it may not be coming through because Aspen has your email address from three emails ago. So just something to keep in mind. And again, we could click the search Aspen, which would take us back to here. And th these tabs, in my opinion, kind of get more boring the further over they go. So you get committees. It's there, it lists them. It needs to be cleaned up some, but these are typically committees that are responsible for things at the state library. Uh, typically committees are a grouping of people um, and this is just our easy way to sort of track them. It kind of hasn't really been moved over to Aspen which is why it really looks different but if you ever needed to find information about the Network Advisory Council that would get you there and then you can start looking at all these other things about um, varying uh, committees. Um, I won't mention that I'm adding additional committees there because I happen to know Tracy would strangle me because it's an abuse of how we were supposed to use the committees, but yeah, moving on. Um, I also want to make it so people can find the information they need. Then lastly, we have our help icon. That help icon is how you get help very creatively named. So if we click that, that will take you over to um, our help desk system. Yes, it is. And from here, you can look at knowledge base articles um, about many of the services the State Library has, including Aspen, and you'll find out that some of these aren't as helpful as one might think, and feel free to submit a ticket and tell me I need to make uh, update those because I know some of them are out of date or actually empty and just placeholders. Um, or go back to that main page, you can submit a ticket. Um, you can sign in if you want or let's see, new user for the password. Back up one. Back up? Yep. The submit the ticket button is hidden ah, down there. Ah. The one at the top, this is really part of, I'm glad you'd made that because the one at the top 
make takes you to a section where you have to create your account in Zoho in our ticket on our knowledge and our um, ticket system but that little button down there takes you to like the quick ticket submission now there are good times to create an account for yourself say sure. you know you need to be doing a lot of back and forth interaction with us and it will then sort of keep all your tickets together and you can go back and look at them but if your hair's on fire and you just need to submit a ticket just submit a ticket um Pro tip, if you wanted to get to me, select Aspen. Um, although, well, three of those would actually get to me. So whatever you need to do to get your question answered, find the department you need. It doesn't necessarily have to be Aspen. It might not be an Aspen question. Um, and then just go through and fill in whatever information you uh, want questions about. You will have to put your name and your email at the bottom and you'll get an email notification right away that it's been submitted. And Oops. Okay. And And I know some of these aren't required, but it really is nice if you fill in some of these things. That's how we summarize data and eventually somebody has to usually fill them in. So even if they're optional, try to toss something in there. Uh, I'm gonna say I have a problem because, well, why not? And then submit it and there it is. And I just got to pop up on all my three other screens that I have a new ticket. And if we come over here, here's the confirmation email you'll get back. If it was your ticket, you won't get this one because, well, it's my ticket. Um, saying that we've received it and we'll review it. This really is the fastest way to get help. Um, especially right now, my phone kind of catches every third phone call I get because, well, the internet. And so that's not necessarily the fastest and I can do a lot of my work not using my state email account um, being open because I need three passwords to get there. So I always get tickets. They always pop up on my screen because they're very easy for me to get to. So if you need something right now, always submit a ticket. And the question in the chat box is how long do you have to wait for an answer? to a ticket and and it all depends <laughs> um it usually chuck if it's something really simple you, I, you, I usually i submit tickets to chuck all the time because it's the easiest way for me to point out oh i have a problem with this record that i'm working on in aspen and i just i open a help ticket and it's pretty rare chuck that you go more than a day um and usually if it's more than a day it's because you're not in the office so it's and it's usually hours. Yeah, an hour or two is pretty common for you to resolve um, most simple things or you let people know that it might be longer. Yeah, and that's the big thing is if it's at a time, you know, I'm riding down the highway with someone and my phone goes off saying I've got a ticket, you know, I'll usually at least get back to you and say, hey, I, I'm not at my computer right now, but uh, I see your ticket and if I can answer it, I will. If I have to do it, something on the computer, I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll get to it as soon as I'm back at the computer. You'll, you'll hear from me really quick. I, I do not leave tickets open um, because, you know, you submitted the ticket for a reason and we want to make sure that works for you. So I, I do try to be real quick about that. Um, I don't think I've had too many I won't say no tickets fall through the cracks, but if I don't get back to you, you know, you can always respond to the original ticket and say, hey, did, did, did you get that? Because, um, you know, sometimes it does happen. Um, so those are all the things that anybody can see without logging in. No problem at all. That usually gets most people the information they need. Now is when it gets to be more fun. Um, 
ooh, let's use a feature in Zoom. Uh, raise your hand if um, you're here, but you don't have a Zoom account. I'm sorry, uh, Aspen account. Okay, so we do have a few people that haven't logged in to Aspen before. Cool. Well, let me just stop you there, and um, that will pretty much conclude our demo then. We're going to be looking at some individual accounts, so I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording. And is that right, Chuck? I want to make sure I'm stopping at the right spot. Can we have multiple recordings? Yes, I can, I can um, pause the recording and then start it up again. Because now I'm going to show how to create an ePass account for this, and there won't be anything personal or private there, but it might be a good okay. second, not, you know, tagged on type of thing. We make it a different video for that. All right. So thanks for tuning yeah. into this quick demo, and we'll, we'll look for the next one um, as well. So hold on. Okay. Here we are going to walk through a setting up an ePass account from scratch. Okay. So this is probably one of the number one problems that we run into is you need to log in to interact with Aspen. There's more than just public facing information that you want to work with. So in order to do that, you'll need to create an ePass account. If you already have an ePass account, please do not create another one. Um, now there's obviously some caveats to that. Um, if you have say a small business and you already have an ePass account, but you want to keep it separate, that, that's different. But for logging into Aspen, if you already have an account with Aspen, don't create another ePass account with Aspen. It really confuses the system. We can fix it, but then you have to submit a ticket and I have to fix it. Um, if you don't know, shoot me an email, submit a ticket. It's easy. I'll check. If I don't find anything, I'll tell you and you can create an ePass. Um, now, part of the difficulty is ePass is run by the Department of Administration. So everything I'm getting ready to show you pretty much after I click this login button is not a lot of stuff that I can physically help you with. You have to get through the process yourself. Once you're done and get back to Aspen, that gets you back to the state library and things that we can actively help you with. Uh, I can still talk you through creating ePass accounts or recovering an ePass account, but you can't ask me, well, what's my password for my ePass account? Because literally, I have no access to that information. So if you were, well, actually, if you were any user and wanted to log into ePass, including whether or not you wanted a new or needed a new account, you would click the login button. And then it pops up and says, we use the ePass system because that's what Montana.gov uses. And so do you really want to keep doing this? And of course we do, because what you do on the internet, you agree. Everybody agrees. So here's the next spot we tend to get people with some confusion. There's the ePass Montana login, and then there's the state employee login. I'm going to say for this group, there would probably be almost no time that anybody would use the state employee account login. That means you have an MT.gov account, you're in the authentication server managed by the state IT network system. And I can almost guarantee you that nobody here is going to fall into that category. So we will always use, always, always, this login with ePass Montana. And then we, what we do is we're going to read to log in. We're going to have to come over here, but I don't have an account yet, so I'm going to create one. Then, like every other account creation, you fill it in. Let's see. Just a second. And people get bonus points if you know who this is.
Anyone recognize that name? <laughs> I got one. Exactly. It is the one of the lead carriers, the characters in Despicable Me. Uh, yeah. It's a lovable villain. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to create a password. And then things get more annoying down here because you have to start answering things. Ooh, I didn't do research on my character. This was all actually in his uh, makeup. I could have actually answered these. By the way, this probably ends horribly because I am showing you all of the security questions except the account doesn't belong to anything. So, uh, let's see. Now, I highly recommend you coming up with questions you might actually know the answers to. Um, if you really want me to go down the security rabbit hole, I could, but I think you all get the idea on that part of it. So we filled in all the information and let me make sure that was my email address. Yep, that's my email address. I'm gonna go ahead, oh, come on. See, this is why live demos are so good, because I didn't realize there was a limit. Oh, of course, it says it right there. So back to reading the dialogues. And let's go ahead with, what's today, the 27th. That way I can reuse this guy later. Now, let's save it. Okay, yes. So now you're actually back at the state library. You've done everything you need to do with uh, the Department of Administration to create an ePass account. We need a little more information from you. Um, if you filled this in on the previous page, it will get passed over to us. Um, uh, more information is better, but this page isn't as important for us to get that because once I associate you to your account, we'll have all your information on the library side. Now, the next place I get problems is this right here. People don't read that they want to join the Aspen community. If you don't click this, I don't get an email. If I don't get an email, I don't know to add you to Aspen because I need to take your Department of Administration account you just created in the ePass, and I need to connect it to the Montana State Library. So I'm gonna say, yes, I do want to join. Now, if, uh, I'm chuckling because this is, this is what you will see when there is a, um, nothing to see here, <laughs> when, when there is a, a problem in Aspen and and it's not you you haven't you haven't broken Aspen yet <laughs> but and the best part is is it actually said it worked but that it didn't work I'll get that addressed um, if you do get that big what we call yellow screen yellow I, the, <laughs> I Suzanne, highly recommend Suzanne wrote bravo in the chat box yeah <laughs> if you get the yellow screen that's a good time to open a ticket um, yes, open a ticket and you can actually copy everything on that page and send it to us because then we know a whole bunch of information about it. Uh, I see in the chat that somebody said they didn't click that checkbox, um, which is okay. When, especially when I'm on my state computer, I actually have a little routine that checks every five minutes for all new ePass accounts 
that have tried logging into the state library. So even if I don't get an email, I will likely see that you signed up for an e-pass and I will go in and add you. So that's, that's not a big thing. Yep, did you have something, Joe? Nope, I'm just okay. sitting here enjoying what, I'm so ha glad that you got to go through the yellow screen right away because that's important information. Yeah. And it's good too for Bev too that she, you know, so she didn't click that box. Can I get back? Yeah, you, you can, <laughs> on something like that, if you're still having trouble, it's just open a help ticket and Chuck will, will link you in. And actually I, I've had a couple of people say, wow, before I could even submit the ticket, you've got it fixed. I have things that pop up on my screen to tell me things didn't go well. So um, most of the time we, we do try to get ahead of that for you. Now, if yeah, that had worked, Chuck, is, Chuck is watching all the time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. um, if that had worked, you would have received an email saying that, welcome to the Aspen community. We're waiting to associate your account. Uh, but since I got that nasty yellow screen, because you know, why not? Um, it didn't finish sending that email. Now, it does tell us that we have already registered with the state, which means right now on my computer in the office, I'm getting a pop-up buzzes, bells, and laser lights popping up telling me there is a new account. Now, sometimes what happens is people are in a real hurry because, well, I really, really wanted to go to that event and it's starting in 10 minutes. So I've created my account. I'm trying to log in and then they come back and they want to uh, obviously register for the event. And let this pop up here. And then we'll come to our event because that's easy. You'll get this message saying that you've logged into ePass, but you're not registered with Aspen. So the next thing I get is a ticket saying, but I just registered. There is one more step that we have to do on the library side to make sure we connect you with you. Uh, we don't want just anybody being able to access your continuing education. I found that you guys are real grumpy if you lose your continuing education records. I'm just saying. Um, so we, we want to make sure it is you. So all this is saying is that you have logged in and essentially you're waiting for me to push a button on my desk to register you. Um, so on my other screen, I have a super secret control panel and I hit the button. Now, if we were to come to this screen. Ah, that's the magic register now button. I, I only, am now... only librarians and library trustees get that. So I have now hit the button to say, yes, this ePass person is this Aspen person. It's just an added security step. And when that happens, you get this super generic message, which doesn't give you much information at all, saying that I completed the stuff I need to do. You're gonna find out that you get 10,000 emails from Aspen. Don't worry, we're working on it, but for now, it's good to get information back. So now- You don't, real, you don't really get 10,000 emails. You get a uh, couple here and there. I think we found 762 places we send emails and ask. <laughs> okay, what's well, that? 10,000. <laughs> um, so from here, when you first log in, it would take you back to the normal Aspen page. If you wanted to register, or you could go ahead and register. Eh, why not? I'll register for this. Do you really want to register? Of course you do. So I have just registered. Now, sometimes there will be questionnaires that come along with things. So that was just a couple of quick and easy clicks. 
if for um, what was it, Joe, the Leadership Institute, there was yes, an application. Mm -hmm. oh, I was going to nope. say there was an actual application we created because we needed some additional information from you. It would take you there and you could fill that information out. Or if you were coming to a, a conference like fall workshops, we're going to ask you what sessions you're planning to attend. Um, so it's one registration for the event and then a, some, you'll get some follow up a form to fill out. And it, I think the really important thing here is to always scroll to the bottom of the screen and make sure to hit that submit button. Um, if there's something, always look down to make sure that you've got something completely submitted. This one says, see, it is submitted. So you know that you, you've done it. It's a nice confirmation page. It is submitted and this particular event had continuing education associated with it. And it has pending provided me the continuing education credit. Now that could change if say, you know, I, I got the flu, I couldn't attend, so I didn't go, in which case you can either withdraw or we just mark you as not attended and then you don't get credit, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's see. Now that I'm logged in, I wanna show you one other quick tip. Um, Although we, that pretty much concludes the EPAS portion. So now I'm going to do a little bit about event registration. Do you want to just keep going with this uh, recording, Joe, or did you want to put a break in? Go ahead. Okay. So now you're logged in, you've registered for your event, everything is right with the world, but I went to an event the other week and I, I w forgot to uh, uh, claim my credit for that. Come on. So then what you can do now that you're logged in and you go to the calendar, you get some extra options. Uh, let me go to something in the past. So, okay. When I say the past, I really meant the past. I'm going to have to work on some of those. So let's say I went to the COVID-19 and Montana Libraries Meetup and Check-In. You can come right here and add that continuing education credit right here from this page to your account. The nice thing about that is I happen to just scroll through there, but if I had done a search, because, well, I kind of knew what it was, or it was a series of events, and you needed to claim credits because, say, you looked at the recording afterwards. I do that, I scroll down, and yeah, I went to the one on 526, I went to the one on 520, and you can just keep going down this list and adding the credits that you've gone and um, requested, or should have earned. Uh, they will get approved at a later date, um, don't just blindly add things because then I get tickets of I need to delete these credits. So it, there's a fine line there. Um, the other thing you can do is you can export those results to an Excel sheet or if you want to add them to your calendar, you can export them. These were features that were not there until we logged in. Um, so this is an easy way, especially right around the time you're going to submit for continuing education certification. Oh, I missed some of my credits. I'm telling you, go to that event search page, do your searches, scroll to the bottom, just tell it to start adding those credits. Um, it's gonna be the fastest and easiest way for you. So the only other thing I really wanna touch on is now that you're logged in, you can come over here to your user home page. And this is why I can't show you my screen because I get all kinds of weird colors and things on my account because of how I'm set up. So this is what you would see. So it says that essentially you're part of, in my case, the Aspen Test Library. And this would take you to go view information about your library. 
Now, keep in mind, I'm registered right now as just a lowly bottom, no more access than I need person. I need just standard staff person at a given library, no, no special privileges or anything. Um, for any of you that are directors, you're going to get a lot more flashy boxes, but that's not for today. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is look at your contact information um, on here. Like, I didn't put in a position email address. Well, it's going to make it real hard for me to get an email if the system doesn't know my position email address. The other thing is you all can edit your own personal information. So if you click here to update, you can come in here and you can edit things. I had to go in and fix somebody's records the other day because the good thing was they got happily married. Their last name changed. So they could come in here and they could actually update their own name. Um, and so like right here, I do have an email account for me, not the position. And again, it's a little confusing. I'm working on that. But for me personally, there is an email address in there. This is something I highly recommend you come in when there's changes and keep up to date. This is a big deal. And I'll do one plug for Joe because she does continuing education. The thing you're gonna wanna see, and hey, Joe, my fix worked. It automatically created a track. Yeah, we used to be you had to you had to create a track and now it automatically creates one. Now that you might want to add another one, but we'll get to that later in the hey, course. My routine does my best guess at what you want. That doesn't necessarily make it right and we can fix it later. So that's not a big deal. So now I'm looking at my continuing education track that I'm working on. Um, I can fill out all kinds of fun information in here. If you find things that aren't correct and you can't edit them, just submit a ticket. You'll see a pattern here. I can fix it. Um, and then down at the bottom is the summary of your continuing education credits. And I think that's a pretty good, without wanting to make your head uh, explode and need a whole bottle of aspirin, that's probably a pretty good tour of Aspen. So now is when the real questions start showing up. So Joe, you can probably stop recording now because these will just be whatever off the wall for people. Thank you, Chuck. I am going to stop our recording. If you're tuning in and watching the recording, do look for other um, Aspen Basics classes that we have in Vimeo or contact Chuck or me or anybody at State Library if you're having trouble finding things and we'll direct you. Thanks.